Hey, what is going on guys? It's Pale Rider time here once again. Today we're taking a look at the Premium Bandai High Grade Pale Rider Cavalry. Now, there's been a number of different versions of the Pale Rider to come out as Premium Bandai HD kits in the past. This is just the latest version, but it looks like, in my opinion, probably the most awesome version. It's got some really nice details on there and a really cool weapon, so let's go ahead and check it out. So in typical P-Bandai fashion here on the front, you've just got an image of the kit and then this cool image uh, action shot there in the background, but around on the sides of the box, there's nothing really too much else to see about this. So we can just go ahead and pop it open. Pretty full box here. As you can see, there's gonna be a lot of parts and I'm expecting probably a handful of parts left over and a good amount of stickers as we've seen with past uh, Pale Rider kits and things. So that's all pretty expected at this point. But if we dig down here to the bottom, we can check out our instruction manual, which is just going to be a P Bandai style manual where there's no color or photographs really of any kind. You got your parts list there and I think we can find our color guide. It should be in here as well too. There's the color guide. It's there in Japanese and in English. It's just not actually in color. And the rest of the manual is just going to be all of the construction. So there's no frills here with the manual. It's just right down to business. And yeah, lots of stickers on this again, unfortunately. But that's just kind of the case with how these kits go. Lots of stickers, but really nicely detailed, very cool looking kits. You know, that's just kind of the common downside of these. But let's go ahead and check out the runners. All right, so here with this, we've actually got two sticker sheets and they're a little bit different. So we'll start off with this one, which is just normal. As you can see, it's just, like I said, filled with stickers. But the thing is, you're basically gonna use like half of these because you have to choose which mode you wanna use. So whether you use the, I thought it was Hades mode, but I don't know why it's orange in this case. I'm not sure if it's still Hades mode or not, but yeah. You'll choose between which stickers you're gonna use and then you got these big marking stickers down here here, the uh, pill, uh, Slave Wraith unit sticker there, and then the Zero Two stickers. So that's all pretty normal until we get to these stickers here for the shield, which are a little bit different in that these are like extra thick stickers, extra thick foil stickers, really like plasticky feeling. So they're quite different. And as you can see, the mirror finish is super mirror finish. So I'm not really sure what the point of making these stickers in like a different way, some new way of making these stickers. It's really interesting. Also got a little black wire here that we're going to be using as well as some beam saber effect parts, SB13, which are in a clear pink and some polycaps here, PC001 in gray. Starting off with our A runner here, this is just going to be from the original Pale Rider kit, so you'll have all these parts on here in white. Runner B as well, also just from the original Pale Rider, so I know we'll have some of these parts that we won't end up using for the kit. Runner C here in gray, also some just joint parts from the original Pale Rider kit, those all look pretty good. Then we're skipping ahead to Runner H, which is actually from the space type Pale Rider, so there you got some weapons parts on there. And then from here, it's all new parts. So here on runner I, we've got a four color runner with some red down there at the bottom, some dark navy, a clear blue piece up there for the eyes, and some clear pink over here for the beam javelin, which I forgot that this includes. So not only does it have that big, cool, like new weapon on its arm, but it also has the beam javelin, which is a really cool weapon as well too. And it looks like it's got a great effect part for that. So that's cool. Runner J1 is back to some more white parts, but again, these are all new for the cavalry kit here, including a new part for the shield. So if they're gonna give us New parts for the shield, why not just redesign it so it doesn't need the stickers and just make it multicolored? I don't know, but anyway. Then we also have runner J2, which is a copy of that portion of the runner up there and a bunch of new parts over here on this side, including there's our handle part there for the beam javelin. Runner K1 here is some more parts in gray for some more backpack, joint parts, hand part on there. And then runner K2 is some more parts in gray for the weapon. And again, just some more little backpack parts. And last but not least, runner L1 here is in that nice yellow orange color for a couple of little V-fin parts. So there you have it guys, looks like it's gonna be a cool kit with a fair amount of leftover parts and a fair amount of stickers, but a cool kit nonetheless. Let me just go ahead and get it built up and we'll see how it looks. All right guys, so here it is all built up, put together and yeah, man, that's a lot of stickers on there, but there is no denying how cool this kit looks. It's just a really super cool design and you have a ton of leftover parts that you guys might find interesting for just, you know, option parts for this if you wanna change up the design a little bit or if you wanna use those, you know, with different kits or something. So I'll show you guys all that stuff here in just a minute. But yeah, I mean, it's just a really super cool design. I love the single, uh, fuel tank there in the back. It's the same design as what you would see on like the space version of the Pale Rider as well as the Gundam 04 and 05. 
Same design as that, but it's just the one single one in the back, so it's a kind of cool look. The backpack in general is it's just really cool backpack design. Overall, there's a lot of really interesting design features going on with this. It's a really super cool looking mobile suit. All I said, it just does suffer a little bit from some common symptoms of HG kits. So let's just go ahead and check it out. So we'll just get the hard part out of the way here first and talk about the stickers. So of course you got a sticker there for the eyes. Now for Hades mode, I guess it doesn't use any visor and you only use this clear blue visor if you have it where the Hades mode is not active. So just leave that off when it is. And of course you've got camera uh, stickers here for the front and the back little orange stickers for that here on the shoulders you got stickers on the front back of the shoulders here on the chest two stickers there on the sides and then two for these gray and orange bits here on the front as well too going down here to the skirt section that dark blue part at the top the dark blue part in the middle and then this part down here at the bottom gray and orange that's three separate stickers going around here onto the back a dark blue sticker there up at the top and then another sticker down here dark blue orange and gray for this section right there here on the back of the legs orange stickers there here on the sides of the legs white stickers that wrap around the inside of those vent areas there here on the front blue sticker on the front of this little cap part there on the front right there and then gray sticker that goes down the front right there white and orange sticker on the inside of the calf right there and then can't forget about this little orange sticker right in the front middle bit of the crotch right there as well too all that said and done let's just quickly go through some of the articulation so the neck articulation pretty standard is just the poly cap uh, double ball joint there and there for the neck so you can get up to there down to there the poly caps here in the shoulders are the kind that will swing out to the front usually but in this case they swing out to the back so that's a little bit different otherwise the shoulder armor can move a little bit up on its own you can bring the arm up to slightly more than any degrees that's going to be about the extent of how high that will move upward you can rotate the arm up there at the top double joint here in the elbow to give you a nice full bend you've got a seam line down the back of the arm right there though and then through the elbow a little bit the wrist is just on your typical ball joint speaking of seam lines you also got a seam line here on the top of the shoulder through the white parts and through the blue parts there for the top and the side of the shoulder there you got some seam line action in the stomach section you do have a bit of like a double ball joint so you can get a little bit of ab crunch there moving that forward and back a little bit otherwise just some rotation here in the midsection around here on the backpack nothing really moves so much here you can sort of change the angle of the uh, fuel tank here so I guess it could also maybe act as a bit of a stabilizer when the mobile suit is flying or like jumping through the air or something possibly but I think that's just meant to be basically just stuck straight like that you got your beam saber handles up here you can just pop those out to use with your beam saber effect parts back down here to the front skirts those are joined but you can clip those apart to separate them for individual articulation the side skirts as well also move up and down just pretty simply there the back skirt is just fixed in place so that's not going to move at all it's just stuck right there the hip joint is the type that will swivel a little bit side to side like that you can bring the leg up pretty high so that front skirt will go up pretty high out of the way and you've got a double joint here for the bend at the knee nothing separated with this knee armor or anything like that but a pretty good solid bend there out to the side it looks like you can bring the legs out pretty wide here as well so that's all looking pretty good for just posability reasons and then down here you've got a kind of double joint here for the ankle which is pretty long so you got some movement like way up there in the leg and then your foot will move down here at the bottom as well too the ankle armor will be able to move up and down a little bit here i'll be a little bit tight but that all works well enough up underneath the feet you got mostly detail there with just the front toe section there with a hollow gap so that is the section that will be visible slightly from the front if you're looking at it from the right angle but mostly again really nice details all around on this is just the fact that we've got a lot of stickers to make up for missing color bits now as for our accessories aside from the two holding hands that you have on the kit there you do also have a Kind of rifle support hand here for the left side also of course have your beam saber effect parts for the beam saber handle stored up there in the backpack you've got your space type beam rifle uh, on this one just the camera can move the side handle can also move up and down all pretty normally this is again the same rifle that we've seen in the gundam 04 and 05 and it's also used by the space type uh, pale rider as well too so it's a really cool beam rifle design i like it of course you've got some seam lines on there but it's all pretty good you've got the beam javelin which is really quite nice you just got the standard handle down here and then it just goes up to this really cool effect part and we'll come back to that here in just a minute i'll also show you the shields so yeah those plastic stickers which are like the main color apps for this i'm only guessing the reason that those are made as plastic stickers and not regular stickers is that they'll just look more like plastic throughout the box so i guess the point is for that uh, to look like the dark plastic here but they're so shiny it doesn't look like that at all so i'm not really sure the reason 
uh, to make them that because they're extra thick as well too. Not really in like a noticeable sense, but I don't really know what the reason was to make those as plastic stickers instead of regular foil stickers. But then you stick foil stickers over the top of that as well too for the big zero two and the Slave Wraith marking logo on there for that. For the connection piece, you've got an option to stick that either onto the side of the arm or to the back of the arm. So you can choose with this connection piece you've got there. You've got some nice detail up inside of here, but only just this one little gray piece for the back side of the shield. And of course, the star of the show is going to be this big massive weapon that will attach onto the arm, very similar to like the heavy Gundam. And this has this big Gatling gun down there at the bottom, this beam cannon rifle bit there out the side. You got this camera bit here on this side with a little foil sticker there for that. You got a secondary handle which will pop out on the side right there so that rotates. You can also open up the front basically just by re replacing this part. So you just pop this off and replace that with this part here which looks like these little missile doors are open and you can be firing the missiles out of there so you don't have little stickers amazingly if you know have stickers for everything else you don't have like little red stickers to stick on to the end of those little missiles inside there but again it's just an easy swap of those parts of course it would have been cool if you actually had like working little parts there that actually open and close but having to swap that is not that big of a deal for me anyway and this will also connect onto this, uh, I guess it's just supposed to be like a battery unit or something for this energy unit. And this plugs into the weapon right there. And this will plug onto the side of the mobile suit here. So when that's in use and that everything's all connected and together, you've got that battery pack on the side skirt and that's plugged into the weapon on the arm. Now, I guess we're just to test the weight of that, let's have it at uh, full extension here and it seems fine actually the shoulder seems like it's holding up the weight the uh elbow joint also not really too bad if you were to have this at an angle or something like that it's holding up just fine i think so that's actually going to work out really well now the last thing i want to talk about is leftover pieces because we've got a ton of those so basically you've got all the pieces here to make the lower leg of the regular pale rider so you've got all those and if you did want to switch them i think these parts here off the side should fit onto there like that so yeah you'd have to swap those uh, but you could use the different leg type if you preferred that. You also got the different feet and all you would need to use is just swapping the poly cap from those feet into this feet, these feet, or just, you know, build it in one way or the other. If you prefer this style of feet or this color of feet, if you just preferred having the blue feet, I mean, the design is slightly different, but the most noticeable difference, of course, is just the color. You also got the front skirts here. Again, you could swap those out if you prefer the design. The same thing goes with the back skirt as well, too. You've got that if you wanted the other different design for that. So it just makes it so you could customize this or, of course, use these Parts with a different kit. You've also got the forearm machine gun parts here as well too which would only be that you would just have to take this part here on the side and just swap this out with this part to give this the machine gun here on this arm which I think could definitely be something very cool to do with this. And similarly you have the original side skirts where the beam sabers are stored so you could have this potentially with four beam sabers because you have the two side skirts and the two leftover beam saber handles that fit into them so if you didn't have this battery pack plugged onto this side skirt or if you had that one here you could have a third beam saber handle plugged onto this side screw over here using that leftover part you've also got the full backpack which is a very simple design but you could very easily swap out this backpack or give this to some other different designs it's basically just two halves and the thruster bell sticking out of there for the design of the backpack and then you've also got some parts for the face again if you preferred the original pale rider face you don't have the clear part and the clear visor part that you have included with this sort of fits into there it's not an exact fit i did try it out and it fits into there kind of convincingly enough but again just some of the leftover parts you have now now the last thing is the other beam saber handle that you have left over aside from this one that i stuck here onto the side skirt you have another one uh left over and I think you could make an alternate beam javelin using this basically by cutting off a piece of the runner, which I've done here. And what I want to do is make a second beam javelin, but not a straight one. I want to make a curved one using these leftover pieces. So what we need to do is first just take our piece of runner and connect it to our beam saber handle. And then we need to scribe some lines in this to match this one, how it has these lines like every so often here. So we just need to scribe some new lines in that and then bend this piece and then we can make a bend. Uh, beam javelin that should look convincing for like action poses and stuff so the hole here in the handle seems to be about 1.5 it's just slightly less but if I hit that with a little bit 1.5 drill millimeter I should say anyway that should just drill that out a little bit and then on our little plastic rod here I'll first drill this out with a little bit one millimeter drill and then we'll switch it to 1.5 millimeter 
Then we can take a little 1.5 millimeter either brass or aluminum rod. In this case, I'm just using aluminum, not for any real particular reason. So maybe we need to cut that down a little bit because it's still leaving a little bit of a gap. Either cut that down or drill the hole a little bit deeper. But in order to scribe those lines, we're just going to take a little bit of masking tape, which looks like it should probably be, it's not going to be exactly the same width as this, as it's not quite right. But for my purposes, that's totally fine. You can cut it to the exact uh, width if you really preferred. But for me, I don't really mind all that much. Just go ahead and wrap that masking tape around there and because you're wrapping the masking tape around there probably a couple times uh, that should give you a good hard edge there where normally masking tape would not be good for scribing because it's too thin. In this case wrapping scribing tape around just a rod like this would actually be kind of difficult to do because it's kind of too thick. So just wrapping masking tape around there a couple times is a probably the best option to do for this and then just take a scriber in this case I'm using a 0.3 BMC scriber and then just wrap that around there to scribe up a little pen line and then just repeat 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 a couple times and then you've got your lines and here we go after just a few lines scribed I'd say that's a pretty good match and just to test here as well our beam effect will fit there at the end it's slightly loose, but I think we can just put a little glue on that and that should also stay on there. Not to glue it permanently, but just a little super glue on the end here just to make that a little bit wider and that should be a tighter fit on there. Do that, but first we need to bend this with just a little bit of hot water or either you can use a hair dryer or something like that as well too. Just be careful you don't melt this too much. I'm just going to use a bit of hot water and bend this a little bit. Once that little bit of super glue there at the end is dry to give us a little bit more thickness at the end, we can plug this on there. It should be a tighter fit. And there we go. There's our new bent for action effect. So if I want to make it look like it's swinging the beam javelin, it can do that. Or if I want to just make it look like it's just holding or a stabbing effect or, you know, whatever the pose may be, I've got an alternate version of the beam javelin for doing that. So we can take a look at our new beam javelin here in action with some more different action poses here. And I mean, that's definitely going to be one of the highlights of this kit where it does have some negative points that I'm just going to keep bringing up about the stickers and it's got some seam lines here and there. But I do think there is a lot to like about this kit as well too. The different array of weapons. I mean, you got your standard weapons with the beam rifle, the beam sabers, the shield, but then you've also got the beam javelin and that big mega rocket launcher, Gatling gun, cannon arm is just pretty awesome. So not only do you have lots of really cool detail on the kit, but then you have some really great accessories for it as well too. So I think that should help to justify the cost of this. Being a P Bandai kit, it's going to be a little bit more expensive for most of you guys. And just based on the number of different HD Pale Rider kits that have come out over the past couple years, I gotta say this one is definitely one of my favorites, if not my, my number one favorite design version of the Pale Rider just because it is just a really super cool design. So I definitely can recommend it, but just with the big caveat that you guys have to just understand all the stickers that you're in for with this one. But other than that, I think it's a very cool kit. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. And of course, as always, big thank you to USA Gundam Store for making all possible, guys. Check the link and the coupon code down there in the video description below, guys, and shop online there. Find some cool stuff for y'all to check out. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, commenting, liking the video. All that is super helpful and very much appreciated. Hope you're all having a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.